Well, I think it's really important that we differentiate between Bitcoin and crypto. So crypto was convicted yesterday on seven counts of fraud. Lying to people about what you're doing with their money is wrong. The beauty of Bitcoin is that's not an issue. There is a very clear digital ledger maintained by computers and a very clear protocol out there that's visible for everyone to see. Bitcoin is very different from crypto. What's up, guys? So pretty big deal. Bill Miller IV, son of legendary investor Bill Miller, went on Yahoo Finance the other day and basically gave a simply Bitcoin spiel on why Bitcoin and not crypto is the world waking up. It looks like it. The mainstream media is coming around. The institutions are coming around. That jackass SBF may have been the greatest advertisement in history for why Bitcoin only. Hey, we got a lot to cover. Let's get it. Bitcoin is very different from crypto. So crypto was convicted yesterday. Bitcoin is still going very, very strong. The network's as strong as it's ever been. You know, there's more users than there's ever been. So it, we continue to see very positive trends in, in Bitcoin, not so much in crypto. Definitely concur. Not looking good for shitcoin Landia out there. And we saw SBF found guilty. You know, kind of sad. No campaign finance charges there. But I think uh, we kind of understand why. Probably end up getting probation or like community service. But we'll be funny to see him, you know, cleaning up trash on your local highway. Fingers crossed for that maximum 115 year sentence. But again, guys, Bill Miller is not lying. Just this morning from Glassnode, the Bitcoin halving is pushing the hash rate to an all-time high following its first ever 500 exahash a second day on September 15th. The network experienced a similar surge on November 4th and 5th with hash rates reaching 521 and 514 exahash a second. The strongest computing network on the planet just keeps getting stronger. And again, let's get to this. This is pretty big news. The legend Bill Miller, well, he's kind of passing things down and Bill Miller IV has acquired majority stake in Miller Value Partners. You know, some of us are visual and we need, we need a refresher, but here is Bill Miller. And if you want to know kind of where Bill Miller IV got his ideas, well, Bill Miller has been in Bitcoin for a while and he's pretty based. So it comes down at the very basic level for supply and demand. So Bitcoin is the only economic entity where um, the supply is unaffected by the demand. So even with gold, if gold, which is $1,800 today, if gold goes to $18,000, there will be a lot more gold mined because mines that are unprofitable will, will become profitable. And so gold, which, which accretes today, the production of gold is about equal to about 1.5% to 2% of the total value per year. And that's the same uh, accretion that Bitcoin has currently. Uh, that, but this year, 2022, I think will drop below 1.5% on that. So only, only 21 million Bitcoin can ever be created or close to it. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin is 100,000 or, or 20 million, there's only going to be that many of them. So um, th all you have to really believe is that the demand for Bitcoin will grow faster than 1.5% you know, over the next number of years, and the price inexorably will go up. So I've, I've, I've only recently been allowing myself to be described as a Bitcoin bull. I, I used to tell people, they say, oh, you're a Bitcoin bull. You, you own a lot of Bitcoin. I'm like, I do own a lot of it, but I'm actually a Bitcoin observer and I'm observing its trajectory as a new technology and comparing it to the trajectories of things like uh, the printing press or the steam engine or the railroads or the automobile or electricity. And, and it's following that very, uh, uh, not, not predictable, because it's not predictable, certainly in the early, early days, a well understood path for the adoption of new technologies. And, you know, Stan, I think it was Stan Druckenmiller uh, said uh, earlier in the year that, and, and, and now he owns Bitcoin, by the way. Hey, but the Millers aren't the only ones, right? We know Paul Tudor Jones, of course, Michael Saylor, even Ray Dalio is coming around to Bitcoin. But the reason is everyone's being forced to because of all the chaos and the competition for the spot Bitcoin ETF is heating up. Important dates are coming closer. And there's also some similarities between Bill Miller and what he's saying and Larry Fink and what he's saying. But hey, let's get back to Bill Miller. He dropped some awesome nuggets here. Let's check it out. What, what is the most positive trend? And, and do you believe that it's largely largely, especially with some of the price action that we've seen recently that seems to have been driven not so much by what's taking place in, in trials, but more so by some of the ETFs that could be set for approval. Yeah, I think the big picture trend is that Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the past 12 years. It goes up through, it's been up three out of four years. People tend to 
focus on the very short-term fluctuations and the volatility. But the reality is there's a real demand globally for an, an uncensorable asset where the regulators can't change the rules and the measuring stick over time. So I think another thing that's driven Bitcoin's appreciation recently is, is the massive debts we're backing up in the U.S. Uh, deficits are going up, debts are going up, and someone's going to have to pay for that ultimately, and it's going to come for money. for t- Man, that is great stuff. And I swear the way he uses, you know, quotes when he says crypto and other things, I feel like he's been tuning into Simply Bitcoin, maybe checking out our show. But Bill Miller also hits the nail on the head. Things are getting crazy. Bitcoin is a safe haven. And just this morning from the New York Times, inflation has fallen sharply this year, but most prices have not fallen. Only the rate of increase has. You know, maybe it's time for the Bitcoin standard. And Bill Miller's going to get more into the simplicity of the math of Bitcoin, but it, you know, all fiat currencies at the end of the day are destined to go to zero and check out U.S. Debt Clock. And Fortune Magazine, who cited this, U.S. federal interest payments will become the government's single biggest expense by 2051. So if that's the case, and they have to print money just to pay the interest on the debt. What's that do to the dollar? Well, everyone's waking up to the fact that not good. Bricks, interest rates, inflation rates. The Fed might be bankrupt, default might be looming. And here we go, Ray Dalio, America's facing a debt crisis as there may not be enough buyers for the influx of government debt. Every single thing is pointing in one direction and that's towards the lifeboat. Oh, but I left my money in the bank. The banks are safe. Yeah, well, no. Here we go, New York Times again. Why are banks suddenly closing down customer accounts? I don't know, but I sense the perfect storm for Bitcoin to actually hit the uh, prophetic super cycle might be here. All right, so not to mention that the spot Bitcoin ETF is likely coming, many are saying in the first quarter, January of 2024, if not before then, as Vanek and some others mentioned that they believe it could happen by the end of this month, but that's not all. Bitcoin is scarce and it's about to get scarcer. The Bitcoin halving is coming and Bill Miller just dropped some knowledge on Yahoo Finance, educating them and letting them know they're not bullish enough. So what's the next lever for Bitcoin, you think? I mean, are we really going to get back to the highs that we saw in 2021? I think next year, the having, if you look at historical patterns to the extent they hold again next year, the having means a reduction in the marginal supply of Bitcoin. Um, the demand, if the demand does not change and the marginal supply effectively gets cut in half next April, there's only one clearing mechanism for that. It's higher price. So, you know, there's all kinds of positive trends. The fact that fiat currencies have an almost perfect track record of failing over long periods of time. Bitcoin's much harder for people in the U.S. to understand, given that we have a clear rule of law and very clear processes to expand the money supply. But the reality is the money will be printed Bitcoin supply is very clearly laid out, and that's a huge benefit for Bitcoin holders. That was awesome. Like Greg Foss said, it's, you know, 10th grade math. The debt spiral is here. We know where that leads, but we also hear it all the time. How can Bitcoin be a store of value? It's so volatile, even though it's been the best performing asset since it's come into existence by like a gajillion percent. So it begs the question, what really is volatile? Is it Bitcoin or is it clown world? I think it's important to define risk. A lot of people equate risk and volatility. The reality is you can't have an asset that's gone up by as much as Bitcoin has over the past decade without volatility. And that that goes both ways. And so that's hard for a lot of people to tolerate. But the reality is people that have tolerated have done very, very well. And so I think that's an important thing to think about. And, and, And the way you frame it is interesting because is it really Bitcoin that's volatile or is it people's perception of this new technology relative to fiat currencies that are volatile. Fiat currencies are the real thing that's volatile. There's only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be created. And so people's, yes, there's a lot of FOMO and trading in and out and people are, should be looking at the bigger trend, which is the things move much, much higher. Best performing asset over the past decade by a gajillion percent. But people focus on the short-term fluctuations in the here and now because they have short time horizons. But people that have longer time horizons, again, I think will continue to do very well in Bitcoin. Yeah, Bill, it makes complete sense. I mean, it's going to better the lives of everyone who uses it. But, you know, the state hates people. So, like, what if they make it illegal? But what what, what happens then? Uh, the Fed has actually studied the, how much they think you could regulate Bitcoin. And what the, the conclusion they arrived at was it's very hard to regulate because it's simply a protocol on your phone. Now, of course, you have these centralized on-ramps like Coinbase and others, but the reality is if people wanted to push the button, it'd be very hard to do. And, and if you look at the history of regulation around Bitcoin in other countries, every time countries try and regulate it, 
search history goes up, usage goes up. So it's very hard to, uh, to, to censor. That's right, baby. You can't stop Bitcoin. You just stop yourself from reaping the benefits of Bitcoin. I guess it's a free world. You can make that choice and screw yourself over on your own accord. You know, at the end of the day, government fiat money is backed by nothing, printed on demand, embezzled by those who print it, taxed to hide embezzlement, frozen if you dissent, and vanishes in a crash. But we got old Elizabeth Warren and the, uh, the crypto army. Ooh, look out, guys. Bunch of morons who can't read are gonna try to tell people about stuff they don't even know. But hey, at the end of the day, Liz, keep it up. Jerome Powell, keep it up. Janet Yellen, Keep it up, because all your hate is just advertising for Bitcoin. The people are sick of you, and they want to go somewhere else. Maybe you should get a promotion. You know, I think Jeezy said it best. And when they mention me, all I'm hearing is emotion. Haters of the year, y'all should give them a emotion. But hey, if you guys can hear that, pretty much the winds of change. It's getting super bullish out there. You want to make sure you're taking your Bitcoin off of exchanges and into self-custody. If you're new to Bitcoin and you need some help getting started or want to make sure you're using best practices, we got just the guys to get you taken care of. Hey, and we know history is rife with examples of the state taking people's personal property. Make sure you're securing your Bitcoin the right way and no better place to get started than the Bitcoin way. Your IT team in the Bitcoin world, Simply Bitcoin Originals, are powered by the Bitcoin way. They are currently promoting their privacy-focused collaborative custody. But hey guys, wherever you are in your Bitcoin journey, the Bitcoin way Way can help you with wallet and nodes, inheritance planning, accepting Bitcoin payments, as we mentioned, multi-sig, collaborative custody, and more. They've got you covered. Schedule a free 30-minute call today using that link below. Hey guys, be sure to like, subscribe, share that sound money gospel. We got a lot more bullish news coming. The ETF race has gotten international. Two superpowers meeting up. Boom. What does it mean? I don't know, but it sounds bullish. And we're going to cover that tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in to Simply Bitcoin Live at 12.15 Eastern Standard Time. And follow us on Twitter. We're getting out all the breaking news so we can keep you up to date with the peaceful Bitcoin revolution. Also, some big news Wednesday. Joshua at large, Josh Smith, will be joining Nico on Simply Bitcoin IRL, Libertarian presidential candidate. And he appears to be a Bitcoin maxi, so that's really cool. Make sure you set those notifications and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Peace.